Escapist Part 1 Written by John Miro Ah, you can always count on old Bobby Charter. Greg Gilson laughed his booming laugh and waved his boys and girls over to the table beside the barn. That's what I told you, didn't I? Greg's five kids all raced each other over, each breathless as they tried to overshout their siblings. I done the most chores. Can I play the video games first? No, a yard party with music, pa. Tunes, tunes, tunes. The two girls, Greg's littlest, just spun in a circle with each other squealing with joy. Arthur, Bobby's German shepherd, bolted from under the table and straight for the forest as Greg's brood stampeded. And Bobby knew how he felt. Being human, however, and not canine, he faked a smile for the ankle biters. <laughs> well, now you can all just work yourselves silly in a chore contest, and we'll see about what gets charged after, Greg teased his kids. They all stopped in their tracks halfway to Bobby's heaping table of salvage, wailing or muttering or suddenly finding other places to be. I ain't kidding nobody, Greg chuckled, watching them go. I'll keep 10% off the panels for him to piss away, and they all know it. The warmth on his face stayed when his eyes dropped from his children to the circuit board in his hands. Thank God for you, Bobby. I would have had to sell off part of the farm to raise market costs for a new power inverter. The way Greg's eyes were shining in the burning noontime sun made Bobby uncomfortable. Shit, he replied gruffly, looking down at the table and scratching at his thick brown beard. People threw good stuff away for a long time before the rippers came. Just not enough people left know what's staring them in the face when they go looking is all. It was an easy find. For damn sure humans are dumb now and were dumb back then, Greg agreed. The big farmer raised a ridiculously muscled arm and wiped away the wetness collecting in his peepers. But don't go pretending you don't know what you're giving me here. When he lowered his hand, though, his face was turning red. Bobby, I know what a find like this is worth. Greg's eyes darted around Bobby's ramshackle plot of land, over the two horses grazing on the little grass and clover not burned up in Bobby's front yard paddock, and up to the tarp nailed in place over his farmhouse. You'd done me favors before, but not like this. Greg held Bobby's gaze. Can't run machines to work my land without working solar panels. Without a crop, I got nothing to trade for seed and stock except the deed to my land. And that's all that my kids can ever count on getting from me. Oh, Jesus Christ, Greg, Bobby growled. Think I'm going to hold out for a payday when my neighbor's kids are getting starved out? Bobby didn't have much in his word bank on the best of days. This praise from Greg was killing him. Oh, there's plenty who would these days. Greg wrapped his arms around Bobby's black and red lumberjack shirt and hugged him. He half-heartedly patted Greg on the back. Shame choking, his throat closed. After a moment, the embrace ended. With an aching wallop on the shoulder, Bobby was glad to suffer. A tug at his pant leg. Bobby looked down into the wide-eyed face of Greg's youngest, Irene. Got any apples, Mr. Bobby? Apples. His face hardened, but he did his best to soften the rush of emotion her innocent question had stirred. He reached over her and pulled a box of berries off the table and held it out to the little girl. Strawberries do, he grunted. They did. The kids all crowded around, grabbing one each and then another at Bobby's prompting and Greg's nodding of permission. Ten minutes later, after insisting on only taking half the corn Greg had brought as payment for the replacement parts for his solar panel, Bobby's neighbor was finally herding his kids down his long gravel driveway out to the country road. As soon as the Gilson clan disappeared past the thick trees lining the driveway, Bobby dragged the front yard gate closed and sagged against it. He felt like shit every time he provided an impossible-to-find widget or parted with seed stock that ought to be too dear for anyone to part with because he knew he could do so much more for them, for everybody. He also knew how that was likely to end up for him. You can't do nobody no good if they put you in the ground, he reminded himself. He stared up at the shattered ripper ship stabbing into the sky a few miles distant, a rusting tower of nightmare and ugly.
You can't do nobody no good if they come and take your secret out of the ground, neither. Little bits, Bobby. Little bits. <laughs>